and welcome. I'm going to take you on an archaeological journey with some help from my friends at Wessex Archaeology. Now it's our job to uncover stories from the past and bring them into the public domain. But as archaeologists, it may appear like our work mostly involves being muddy and using spades and trowels to reveal our history, but the world of commercial archaeology is steeped in cutting-edge science, technology, engineering and even maths. So join me as we find out what is Wessex Archaeology. Before a new road, housing development or any construction project can take place, the developer will ask us to undertake research so we can determine the archaeological impact of the construction project. So with the help of our heritage team, we undertake research for the developer and find out about the site's history. Our heritage team had the lucky job of visiting museums and archives all across the country in order to piece together as much information as possible about the site's history. This is called a desk-based assessment and can guide the developer on what steps to take next based on the potential for archaeology. So thanks to our research team, we now know more about the archaeological potential. But wouldn't it be great to see archaeology in the ground without even digging it? Well, that's just what our geophysics team can do. Let's find out more. Geophysical surveys are an invaluable, non-intrusive method of assessing the archaeological potential of nearly any given site where archaeological works are taking place. Wessex Archaeology utilises the best available techniques to ascertain the presence of underlying materials, deposits or archaeological features. There are numerous methods of geophysical survey including magnetometry, earth resistance and electromagnetic induction. Ground penetrating radar is one such example. This technique passes thousands of pulses of radar energy through the ground allowing us to measure the time this takes to bounce back off of any underlying features. By stacking these readings together horizontally and vertically we can produce a 3D image of the subsurface. From this information we can determine the depth and size of archaeological features prior to or even instead of intrusive work. On this site, we identified the footings of the buildings recorded on historic mapping dating to the 19th century, as well as several linear responses that indicate former walls along the eastern side of the site. Geophysics is an excellent way to see the country and gain valuable on-site experience. So we've done our research, we've interpreted our geophysics, and now it's time to start digging. Excavations allow us to dig into the ground to confirm the presence or even absence of archaeology. Excavations can take us all over the country, from the more rural settings to the thriving hustle and bustle of a big city. Different approaches are required depending on the type of archaeology that we expect to encounter. And all of this is guided by the historic research and the geophysics results that we've done beforehand. We target our trenches to reveal as much archaeology as possible, and we treat the machine bucket just like a big yellow trowel as we guide it down through the soil until we've reached the first archaeological horizon. Using our hand trowels now, we move aside the soil and earth to uncover and reveal archaeological features. This site was in Sheffield city centre and the team are revealing some really lovely Victorian furnaces and other industrial structures. Once the features are clean, we record them, and this part is very important as it becomes a permanent historical record. From our research, we knew that the remains of Sheffield Castle lay beneath years of 19th and 20th century rubble and buildings, and thanks to our excavations, we have been able to discover more about this important and historic site. As you can imagine, making the best archaeological record possible is very important. So we use some very technologically advanced pieces of kit to do this in our geomatics team. Geomatics covers a wide range of techniques involved in recording and analysing different kinds of spatial data. There are numerous methods of recording spatial data, including remote sensing, photogrammetry, topographic and walkover surveys, as well as terrestrial laser scanning. UAV photogrammetry is an excellent example of how new technologies enable us to rapidly record archaeological landscapes and features. This technique involves taking several overlapping photographs, which are then processed through software, which analyzes the space between pixels to generate a 3D model. We can also use photogrammetry to record smaller items, such as finds and artifacts from across our sites so that they may be presented to the public. In this example, you can see an early medieval tiled floor from our excavations at Bath Abbey. 
We also use techniques such as laser scanning to record complex structures like these crucible cellars in Sheffield. Geomatics offers many opportunities to learn advanced surveying techniques that are employed across many different industries. As archaeologists, we often get asked, have you found any gold? And if we did, the finds room is where we would take it. So let's take a look. The finds department at Wessex Archaeology is the first destination for all finds recovered from our site. When finds first arrive in the department, they are cleaned according to the material type. This could include finds from any period, from the Neolithic to the Roman period to the 20th century, and can include a wide variety of materials such as pottery, flint, animal bone, metals and glass, as well as human remains. Finds are stored in a warehouse facility until they are analysed and reported on by the team of find specialists at Wessex Archaeology. The finds are bagged and boxed according to the guidelines issued by the museum that is going to have them when the analysis is finished. The specialists will look at the material and determine the range of types and dates present and may well compare the finds with similar items from other sites. When there are large groups of pottery, the specialist will try to join the broken sherds to try to reconstruct the vessels that made up that group. This work all helps to build up a picture of what was happening on the site so that the full report can be produced. Just as finds can help solve pieces of the archaeological puzzle, so too can environmental remains. Here we can discover what plants were growing in the Stone Age or even how much charcoal they were using in their cooking. Environmental archaeology helps us interpret the landscape of the past and how people interacted with it. All these buckets are full of soil from archaeological features. They'll be processed to collect any environmental material, like the remains of plants and wood and snails. Each bucket has a label that shows us exactly where the soil came from, which site and which feature. We add water and hydrogen peroxide of the sediments for a clay to the sample and use this with a constant flow of water in a tank to gently break down the sediment, like Jenny's doing here. This washes the sample so that what we're left with is the environmental material which we call the flock because it floats, and things that don't break down, like stones and fines, which we call the residue. Once the flot and residue are fully dry, they can be looked through to pick out the environmental remains for identification. We put them through sieves of different sizes to make it easier to sort through the material. The residue is looked through by hand and the flot is sorted under a microscope. The studio is where we really bring the past back to life. Each of the previous departments have given us more information about the site, and now it's time to recreate it. Imagine stepping inside a Roman villa and exploring each room through a virtual world. Our studio team have created this reconstruction based on real features and artefacts. This virtual Roman villa is based on the results of our excavations. Rather than recreating entire worlds, we may want to capture important finds from a site instead. Our 3D scanner takes high resolution images, accurately capturing details of even the most delicate finds, and once processed, we have a fully rendered 3D object. For some objects though, like this Roman brooch, the best way to capture its incredible detail is by drawing it by hand. And we may also want to show the type of people who lived in that period and maybe have even worn that brooch. It's not just archaeology that our studio is good at. We have photographers, filmographers, illustrators and 2D and 3D animators that together enable us to make documentaries and animations and publications and even films like this. And this is Hazel. She's the newest member of our studio team. Hazel is our 3D animated archaeologist. She has a lot to say about the past, and you might even see her on YouTube. This film has shown you the many exciting and varied departments within Wessex archaeology, and how our work of bringing the past to life couldn't be done without using science, technology, engineering and maths. So the next time you find yourself in the classroom, doing long division, wiring a circuit or maybe setting up flasks for an experiment. Just think, could you be learning the skills of a future archaeologist? Wessex Archaeology is an educational charity. To find out more about how archaeology can support STEM learning, as well as a range of other subjects, visit our website or contact the community engagement team 
on engagement at wessexarch.co.uk.